morning family god bless you in jesus name what a privilege and an honor to be alive on this morning our god is good our god is great god bless you bless morning in jesus name i pray you're well good morning all over the world mississippi everywhere god bless you bless morning Gonna spend some time before the Lord this morning, okay, in prayer. The enemy doesn't go on holiday, you know. The enemy doesn't go on holiday. The enemy doesn't take a holiday. Do you understand? Hmm. The enemy doesn't go on holiday. You know, I just woke up in a you know uh i just had a bereavement you know a, a, a bereavement sister-in-law her mother you know bereavement so you know it just made me realize that the devil doesn't go on holiday you know what i'm saying right the devil doesn't go on holiday you know when you're celebrating that's when he really wants to come in and cause confusion because it will hit you down in your belly anytime you get bereavement is it's sad but you know there are some times when you know it's like it, it you know it hits you down there Do you understand because he knows the season that we're in he knows the season that we're in you know and so we need to be very very mindful we need to be very very mindful even as we're celebrating to be vigilant at the same time you know we need to be vigilant because he's not playing a fair game He's not in the business of being fair. He just wants to mess us up. He just wants to confuse us. He just wants to silence us. He just wants to shut everything down. But we are a people of prayer. We are a people who know who our God is. And we're standing on the revelation of who our God is in order for us to be productive. In order for us to be prosperous. Listen to this now. The Bible says something. The Bible says something. Listen to this now. Thank you. Second Kings. Sorry. First Kings chapter 19. I want to show you something. The devil believes so much in being able to be alive to see tomorrow. I want you to pay attention. That's why I tell you we're going to be dealing with time. First Kings chapter 19. The devil is so confident. What is now? He was able to pronounce judgment or a curse. Not for right now, but tomorrow. That means that the devil is confident of seeing tomorrow. Listen to this, verse Kings chapter 19. Listen to this now, verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Hear what the devil is saying. It just jumped into my spirit. Uh, the devil is so confident of seeing tomorrow that we're just now. There are some people that he will not deal with now. There are some people that he will not attack now. But guess what? He will attack you in your tomorrow. My God, he will attack you in your tomorrow. Do you know who he's talking to? Those of us that pray. He said, listen to me now. I know what you've done in 2017. This is your now. But what is now, Sister Renee? Your tomorrow is 2018. Your tomorrow is 2019. Your tomorrow is 2020. And I'm getting ready to inflict damage because what is now? A report has been given to the realms of darkness of, listen, of what you've been doing in 2017. Listen to me. Anytime I see somebody disconnect from prayer, not just prayer, man, if you belong to a prayer group that you know has been ordained by God, listen to me. I don't care what goes on in that group. Pay attention attention ask god if he's the one that is telling you to disconnect because let me tell you something you have left some footprints you know uh thank you holy ghost you know sister cheryl if ever and i know it's never gonna happen to you but, but so i'm gonna use you anyway sister cheryl if ever the fbi was to investigate you and you have a pc or a, 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 a macbook or whatever it is a phone sister cheryl and let's say that you know there's some fraudulent activity that they found that you know, you know you 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 know you know you're one of the biggest fraudsters ever to live, Sister Cheryl. 
and they're now investigating you, right? And, and Sister Cheryl, let's say that you, you know, all the search engines, like, you know, you've, you've erased everything, right? And you think you're safe. But you know, there's some, there's some things I found out when you look into, you know, computer jargon, there's like cookies and them kind of stuff, right? Footprints that you leave, you understand? That even without you, what is now, having to tell them the website that you've been to, they can grab a hold of your gadget and they can look or they can find out places that you visited four, five, sometimes even ten, ten years ago. Just based off upon your search history. Watch this now. Jezebel is coming after the prayerful people because he knows the damage that you've inflicted on him and his kingdom from the last year and from this year. And he's now saying, what is now? I'm not getting ready to deal with you in 2017. What is now? I'm not getting ready to deal with you in 2017. But rather, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait and deal with you in 2018. What is now? Pay attention to what happens. The same man of God who deals with the demonic and deals with the principalities is getting ready to get nervous because what is now? Rather than him go into a deeper level of travail, rather than him going to a difficult or you know a much more a much more you know deeper place, what is now? He begins to run. Cheryl. And that is why a lot of people who pray, a lot of people who disconnect, it is because they're running away from their destiny and from their purpose. The devil is not interested in running people out of churches no more. He's interested in, listen, getting you to disconnect from a position and a place of prayer. Let's go on. Let's go on. Hmm. What is now? Verse 3. Dr. Nikisha, I want you to pay attention to verse 3. It will bless you. Listen to this. And when he saw that, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what he saw, but what is now? The Bible says, when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. What is now? And went to be a Sheba, which belongs to Judah, and he left his servant there. I got me a big towel this morning. Listen to this now. Listen to this. When he heard the words that were being spoken by the messenger who was carrying a message, not from the king, what is now, but from Jezebel, the Bible says, we're talking about Elijah here, just in case you forgot him, who we're talking about here. This is the man who had commanded rain to cease for three years and, and, and six months, mess with the cycle of rain. Mess with the theological understanding and the theological background of those who were living in those days. Students say, as long as I speak, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. As long as I declare, my God, there shall be no rain until I said so. Verse 17, sorry, chapter 17. Are you there? Chapter 17 says, And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel your lives before whom I stand, there shall, be, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, except at my word. The same man of God in chapter 19 is now running for his life. Not because of a word that was issued to deal with him today, but a word that was going to deal with his tomorrow. Fight or flight. I love that. Fight or flight. Prayer mantle is a decision that you're going to have to make today. Fight or flight. Fight or flight. Fight or flight you're gonna stand flat-footed and deal with that which you have been called and mandated to deal with or you're going to fly away now listen to me now don't think that in you flying away or in you running you're going to escape don't don't, don't think so don't think that because you are running you know you run from one state to the next you left California and you went to Florida you left 
uh, Jacksonville and you went to North Carolina. You left New York and you went to, uh, let me think of another place, Mississippi, Jackson. See, don't think that because you change location, what is now, that thing that you're fighting, you have now disconnected from what you've got to realize is the same way that you are able to move in the car by flying, the enemy also has modes of transportation. As a matter of fact, before you decided to move to Jackson, guess what? The enemy passed your file to the demonic principalities that operate in Jackson. So before you got there, what is now, when you booked your ticket, they are going to meet you in Jackson, Mississippi. They're going to be there waiting for you, folk. They're going to be there waiting for you. So all you have to do is to stand flat-footed and begin to deal with this thing that wants to mess with your tomorrow. It means that the devil also understands time. And he understands that there are some things that I need to wait on and I don't need to release. In Listen to me. That's why some of us from the ages of, you know, from the time we were born, zero to up to the ages of 16. You never dealt with any warfare in your life. But when you hit the 17th year of your life, you began to experience warfare like you've never fought before. Parents divorced. Parents were at each other's throats. Your brothers and your sisters began to take side. All of a sudden, a family that was picture perfect now begin to look like a war zone which caused the families to separate. Where just now, the money was squandered and from being in the position where you went to private schools and you went to the best schools and you ate in the best restaurants and you moved with the who and who, you know, who's who ah, of your community, all of a sudden now your standard began to drop and you're trying to figure out what is it that happened from my ages of 17 up until now that I'm still in a fight that I didn't fight when I was 16 years of age. Because let me tell you something, the devil was smart. He wanted to play dumb, pretend as if that he doesn't exist. Wants you to believe that he's not there. Wants you to believe that you know everything is a figment of the imagination of the people that go to church. Wants you to believe that everything is simple. You know, everything is black and white. Let me tell you something. Nothing is black and white. There is always a cause. That's why that boy Joseph I, is there not a cause? You're hating on me, but I know there's a reason why you're hating on me. I know people are going to be coming out from their holiday mode. You know, you're going to see the numbers increasing. You know, but the holiday season, I know people, you know, are you know, busy with stuff. And it's okay, but we, 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 we will remember them in prayer. There's a cause. There's a price to pay. There's a victory to be had. And there is a people that need to be released from the burdens that they find themselves operating and carrying. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me, we're going to start. I can't wait to the 31st to start praying these prayers. I can't wait. Because I see the enemy is still in the business of taking people out prematurely. So I'm not going to wait before we start praying. I want us to get ready to pray into our tomorrow. You know what your tomorrow might be? Your tomorrow might be your business. Your tomorrow might be the child that you're getting ready to give birth to. Your children might, you know, your tomorrow might be that job that you're getting ready to walk into. Your tomorrow, listen to me, might not make sense to you now because you might not see it. But the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords promises us that if we call upon him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I told you this and I've said it several times in Genesis chapter 49. A father sat down. A father sat down, Sister Cheryl, in the book of Genesis chapter 49. He was getting ready to die. He was in today, but he saw the tomorrow of his children. And if you check and you study the Bible properly, the words that he pronounced over his children in Genesis chapter 49, from Genesis to Revelation, there was not one word that didn't manifest. He proceeded to disinherit his firstborn. The one who was supposed to be his might and the excellency of his strength. 
he stood there, sat down, disinherited him, and what is now as a result of that, that firstborn Reuben, we don't talk about Reuben no more. Everything we do, the tribe of Judah, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Well, it was supposed to be the lion of the tribe of Reuben because he was the firstborn. But his father disinherited him. Listen to me. May your tomorrow, may your tomorrow never be disconnected from you. Some of you, your tomorrow might be in one state, Sister Brenda, but you are in another state. Some of you, your tomorrow might be in another country. But you're in another country and you will never get the opportunity to meet with your tomorrow. Some of you are living in Jacksonville, but your tomorrow might be in Miami, but you just don't know it. And that's why you're frustrated. One of our write this down, prayer man to write this down. We are praying about our tomorrow. And our prayer point this morning is that may our tomorrow never be separated from us. In the name of Jesus. May our tomorrow never be separated from us. Let my tomorrow not be disconnected from me. I pray that I'm not disconnected from my tomorrow. Remember the wise men came in and said, For we have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. He is supposed to be a king. His tomorrow is showing me kinship. His tomorrow is showing me prosperity. Her tomorrow is showing me victory. Her tomorrow is showing me prosperity. Her tomorrow, in the name of Jesus, is showing me that she's supposed to be in a place where she's supposed to be the head and not the tail. But Herod is the spirit that likes to mess with the tomorrows of the people of God. Oh, I just said something. I just said, I just gave you a new revelation. I said the Herod spirit, that spirit of Herod is a spirit that likes to mess with the tomorrows of the people of God. Now write this down too. Listen to me now. I want to say this. When we come to prayer, please have your notepads and your pens ready because listen to me. I don't know what prayer points are going to be lifted up if I've not written it down. Okay, I don't know what prayer points are going to come up. So some of you don't love typing. Please use your energy to rather get you a pen and a notepad and begin to write certain things down. Are you following me? I don't know what I said first, but I know I said this. Anything that wants to disconnect me from my tomorrow, I am here to sever and to cut off that link. Anything that wants to separate me from my tomorrow, I am here to make sure that it does not manifest. Anything that wants to mess with my tomorrow, and listen to me, by saying anything, one of the spirits that I want you to deal with, we're going to be dealing with, is that Herod spirit. Because what just now, he told them, go and search for him, and when you found him, come back and give me word. So that I will also go and worship him, which was a lie. He was never interested in going to see or to worship him. Rather, he was interested in messing or destroying the tomorrow of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You know, oftentimes, Sister Leslie Nicole, if that's your name, I want you to catch this revelation. Because spiritually, we can be babies when it comes to our destiny. There was lying a baby. There was lying a baby. There was lying a baby who was innocent and ignorant of the fact that he was supposed to be the deliverer of a generation that was even yet unborn. That was the tomorrow. But the Herod spirit, who was not going to be alive tomorrow, what is now, was interested in destroying. That today, rather, destroying the tomorrow of the one who was born today. My God, let me, let me see if I can say that again. 
uh, the Herod spirit, what is now, which was not going to be alive tomorrow, what is now, was interested in destroying the tomorrow of that which had been born today. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I want us to go into that place of prayer, prayer mantle. Our tomorrows will not be shut down. Our tomorrows will not be destroyed. Our futures will not be silenced. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, let's begin to go back to the basics. The Bible says clap your hands, stamp your feet, and begin to declare in the name of Jesus that my tomorrow will not be silenced. My tomorrow will not be destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, let's begin to pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for my tomorrow. I pray for the tomorrow of my children, the tomorrow of my loved ones, the tomorrow of my wife, the tomorrow of her business, the tomorrow of prayer man. In the mighty name of Jesus, every destroyer, in the name of Jesus, every destroyer of our tomorrow, every destroyer of our tomorrow, every destroyer of our tomorrow, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come to silence you. We come to break your agenda down in the name of Jesus and we release ourselves from captivity of tomorrow. The captive that have come to shut us down because of our tomorrow, we silence you and we break you down in the name of Jesus. Loose your hold over my life. Loose your hold over my children. Loose your hold over my loved ones. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will continue to be a prayerful people. We will continue to be a people who know virtue. We will continue to be a people who understand the power of prayer in the mighty name of Jesus our tomorrow is secure our tomorrow is prosperous our tomorrow is secure our tomorrow is prosperous our tomorrow is secure our tomorrow is prosperous in the mighty name of Jesus nobody can take away our tomorrow nobody can silence our tomorrow nobody can destroy our tomorrow our tomorrow is secure in the blood of Jesus our tomorrow is secure in the blood of Jesus our tomorrow is secure in the blood of Jesus let the blood of Jesus give us the victory of our tomorrow we will see the victory of our tomorrow because we shall live in our our tomorrow we shall live in 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 our tomorrow nothing will shut down our tomorrow nothing will silence our tomorrow in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus our tomorrow is secure 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 we will live to see our tomorrow we shall 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 live to see our tomorrow in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we will live to see our tomorrow. My God, we will live to see our tomorrow. I decree and I declare that we shall live to see our tomorrow. My God. We will live to see our tomorrow. We will live to see our tomorrow. We will live to see our tomorrow. Whatever is in our tomorrow that is not God, we silence it. Whatever, be it cancer, be it disease, be it sickness, be it illness, whatever name it has, it is not in our tomorrow. We refuse just to look at today. Ah, we deal with our tomorrow in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, our tomorrow is secured. I said our tomorrow is secure. Prayer man, listen to me. Get ready. Okay, get ready. Get ready for the 21 days of fasting. We're going to deal with some things. We're going to deal with revelation. It is not going to be prayer as usual. It's not going to be the normal 21 days of fasting and prayer that you see everybody do. No, we're going to deal with some deep things. We're going to make sure. Listen to me. Listen, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You can see from the word of God the devil is not playing. You know why he was dealing with tomorrow? Do you, you, you know what I heard when we were praying? Do, do, do you know what I heard? Do you know what I heard? 
Ha, vasa. See, Jezebel was looking for a void. Then I said, Oh, Baba Basa. Sister Brenda, Jezebel was just looking for a void. Because let me tell you something. Oftentimes, we're just now people who don't plan or who plan on a daily basis. We're just now, they wait to get into tomorrow before they know what they're going to do. So, in the realms of the spirit, my God, I'm getting ready. I'm getting excited. Oh, Kalalabasa. He looked, rather, Jezebel, the spirit looked. And I've told you this, listen, if you really want to give that Jezebel spirit agenda, you're going to have to say it's a he. I don't, know, I don't know if you've ever really listened to me preach on that word before. I know more often times people look at it and say it's a female spirit. I want, listen to me. Jezebel got that spirit from her father. Because her father's name was Ethbel. You see what I'm saying? Jezebel got that spirit from her father. So if you really want to put a gender on it, you have to say it's a he spirit. I know, I know what the preachers have been telling you all of these years. But listen to this now. Listen to this. Sister Renee. Look, Sister Sharon, and saw that Elijah's tomorrow was empty. It was void. There was nothing in his tomorrow. Because what is now, if I release that word today, what is now, his today will reject the word. Because his today is full. But his tomorrow is empty. So guess what? I'm going to release that death assignment in his tomorrow. And to prove to you that his tomorrow was empty, guess what? When the word was released, he reacted. He ran. May your tomorrow never be empty, prayer mantle. Listen to me. You, you, you know what? Let me sometimes, and I say this. I get a bit low. You know, sometimes I get down. I'll be honest with you. Sometimes, you know. But let me tell you something. When I come into contact with prayer mantle, with you, as my brothers and sisters, I have confidence because I know what God has given me. Because let me tell you something. I don't read nobody's books to get revelation. I don't listen to nobody's preaching to get revelation. Sometimes I'm amazed by the things that come out of my mouth when I come on the scope to pray with you. Because I know it was not rehearsed. When I looked in this text this morning, I didn't know what he was going to say. But what is now, he began to speak to me about to, When I opened up, he just started talking about to myself. I said, what are you saying? It's almost as if what is now, my words, you know, the words that was coming out of my mouth, Dr. Nikisha, was moving faster than my brain could comprehend. Before I could think anything, it's already been said. I'll be serious with you. If you ever get the chance to be around me, you will see it. Now listen, I read the Bible. But I'm telling you, the things that come out, I don't have a big library of books and preaching. No, 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 no. No, I have confidence. See, when I stay in my lane, which is prayer, and I pray, then he begins to talk back to you. That's my gifting. I'm pretty serious. Sister Brenda, I don't know how to explain it. That's, that's, that's the little that I can do by way of explanation. I wish, you know, there's times when you see me, I come on with my book, you know, like that big red book that I have, and you know, you know, and I write stuff down. Those are the times when I've sat down and he's spoken to me, and I'm like, okay, guess what, I don't forget. But most of the time, I just grab my Bible, I read it, and then he begins to speak. Listen to me. When he told us about time, it didn't make no sense to me, but I told you what he said. I didn't know what, and I don't know what he's going to pull out, but already he started. Write this one down. If you didn't start documenting stuff from 2017, going to 2018, I want you to document, and you begin to see the revelation and the things which are going to happen in your life. Okay? I want you to document what the two prayer points from today. The two prayer points, I want you to document them. And in your own spare time, pray too. Okay? Pray to. Pray to. Because trust me, you will see victory. We are, we are, we are testimonies of what victory looks like. You and I. We are testimonies of what victory looks like. Had it not been for God, where would we be today? Had it not been for God, where would we be today? Look at what God is doing in our lives. Look at where God has taken us from. Look at where God is taking us. I keep saying this to you. And every time God just pulls something out. Remember, I guess it's something the last couple of seconds is just replaying back in my mind right now. His tomorrow was empty. That's why, you see, 
it's like you know if see i got this bottle of water right you know i'm drinking this local drink that gives me energy you know it's a good drink it's a good drink because i'm preparing myself for the fasting right can you see me i'm going to try something see now this as you see this cup is you know sorry this bottle is is practically empty the two prayer points somebody put the prayer points up L look at this this is empty sorry this is full okay now listen to me i don't care how much okay i love this bottle of this water whatever because it is empty if i want to add some of this drink to it what is now all is gonna happen is it's just going to overflow i'm making sense to you so far it doesn't matter what i do it's just gonna overflow you see i'm just now because what is now there is no other space in it to take any more of the jews do you understand so that's why I keep saying to you that if you fill your day with prayer, when the enemy comes in, he will look at every minute, every second, every millisecond. Every part of your time is full. So there is no space. See, that's why Jesus puts it perfectly. He said, somebody find the scripture for me. Somebody, somebody find the scripture for me. Listen, there's a scripture where Jesus says, the devil cometh, but he has nothing in me. Have you heard that scripture before? Have you heard it before? He said he comes. But one thing that I can assure you of is that there is nothing in on my inside that belongs to him. There is no space. He wants to put cancer in my body, but there is no space for the injection because I'm full. You know, especially this season, those of you who have eaten a lot, I know there's some of you that are too much. I'll deal, I'll deal with you later. But you know how you, when you eat so much and you're full and you begin to still stuff it, you know, like you feel sick? Is it John? Thank you, sir. John 14, 30. Let's go there. I'm glad I have some Bible scholars on. John 14, 30. I want to show you something. John 14, 30. John 14. John 14, 30. Aha! That's it. That's it. That's it. Listen to this now. Listen to this now. The prayer points have been put up. The one who didn't have it. Take a screenshot and write it down. John 14, 30. Look at this now. Okay, let's go from 20. And now I have told you before it comes. That when it does come to pass, you may believe. Verse 30. I will no longer talk much with you. For the ruler of this world is coming. And he has nothing in me. Brother, sir, he's coming. See, we will not all, we are not going to prevent his coming. He has to come. But the thing is, when he comes, what just now, even if he tries, you know, like when he tries to inject you with that cancerous demon, see, because, because you are full, that, that syringe, that's the word I'm looking for. See, it's, it's, it's going to like, what's the word? You know, like, you know, when you try to, in, you know, like it would just, it won't go in, it would just spill out. Because there is no space in you to receive anything. My God, I feel him all over. There is no space on me. See, I'm full, I'm packed. You know, you can't put anything on the inside of me because I'm full. I'm full. My God, are you still with me? My God. Are you still with me? It froze for a second. Right. It froze for a second. Ah, there is nothing. There is nothing that he has. Because I'm full. You know, I'm full. Uh, there is nothing on me that belongs to the devil. I'm full. That is what I want us to get to. That's what I want us to get to. That's what I want us to get to. You ever, you ever been to the stadium before to watch a football game? You know, when the capacity is full, doesn't matter how much money you have. 
My God, they'll tell you we're full to capacity. We can't take on anybody any longer. You ever try to catch a flight? And then they come and they tell you that the flight is fully booked. You can't get on. As desperate as you are to get to your destination, they'll tell you, sorry, sir. Sorry, ma'am. We can't take it because we are fully booked. Flight is full. Kalabasa, a few God. My God, all over me. All over me. That's where we need to get to, folk. That will be my assignment with you for 2018. Please don't disconnect from prayer mantle. Please don't give up on us. Trust the Lord. Because we're going places. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Declare like that woman of God is declaring. I'm full. Declare. Declare it. That's why that song. That song right there I think had enough sin. Fill my cup Lord. I lift it up Lord. Come and quench. This testing of my soul. Bread of heaven. Fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up and make me whole. I think I sounded okay. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread from heaven. Fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up and make me whole. In Jesus' name. And now listen to me. Uh... So, on the 31st, right, as we're crossing over, please, I want to, I'm giving a couple of days, just grab a hold of something, okay, an offering, okay, just to say, God, I thank you for what you've done for me in my prayer life in 2017, grab a hold of something, okay, you know how we do things on prayer mantle, it's not by force, it's not by manipulation, if you believe that the Lord has really been good to you when it comes to your area of praying, because I know some of you give to your church and, you know, the ministry that you belong to, so there's no pressure, Okay, if you feel like God has really blessed you when it comes to prayer mantle at the end of the year, but 31st, grab a hold of something. Okay, all I ask you to do is just pray and add the number 70 somewhere, whether it's one dollar and seven cents, whether it's 70 cents, whatever the Lord has you know you believe. Okay, just grab a hold of something and let's come and thank God on the, on the 31st. Okay, God bless you, love you all. I'll see you, I'll see you. Okay. My, my, my son is getting better, you know, he's, I, I just held him before I came on, you know, he's kind of like, he's been sleeping all throughout the night, well, he woke up twice, my wife said, so, and I grabbed hold of him, and I was just talking, I said, hey, you're going to become great, you're going to become great, you know, you're going to be, a, you know, you're going to be great, just every now, every chance I get, I just lay hands and I pray for him, you know, and he's doing well, he's looking good, you know, he's, God is blessing him, God is blessing him. So when um, just help me, okay? Support prayer mantle. Because some of you don't know. You know, he might be the one that will pray for that next generation. That can be your son. That can be your grandchild. You know, who might come into contact with him, you know, and imagine your grandchild. Hey, my mom knew your dad. Your dad is the African man that used to pray all the time on Periscope, innit? Can you imagine? 10, 20 years down the line. Hey, Jesus, I love this woman of God. 300,000 is coming in Jesus' name. Oh, no, I did not wake him. The devil is a liar. I didn't wake him. I didn't wake him, you know. Um, he slept, um, you know, last night. He slept. And, you know, he's doing well. He's doing well. In Jesus' name, he's doing well. I don't, I don't, listen, I told you I repented. Now, why would you bring that up again when I told you? You don't trust me that I repented? My God, I repented. I told you I'm not going to do it again. See, you go, O ye of little faith. You don't believe in me. I ain't good. I didn't wake him. I used to. Till somebody told me. Somebody rebuked me. Said, "Don't do that," because that's how he grows. I'm like, "Oh, okay. Stop doing it." I ain't done the same. I mean, now listen. I'll be honest, though. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I was tempted to because yesterday I didn't see him. You know, like open his eyes. So I was like, "Why are you still sleeping, man?" But I, I you know, I just touched his nose. I just touched his nose, but he did. Woman of God, I touched his nose, but he didn't wake up. I promise you didn't wake up. See, I have to confess. I touch his nose a little bit, but he didn't wake up. Sister Brenda, he didn't wake up. He didn't wake up. I guess, you know. Oh, you didn't? Where have you been all this time? That, that shows that you ain't been with prayer until, you know, you, that means that you, you, you've abandoned me if you didn't know all this news that I'm sharing with you. That means you abandoned me. Now you need to repent for abandoning your brother in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So you gotta trust. You see, 
I didn't wait. I just touched his nose a little bit. It wasn't like, poke, there's no problem to get up. Do you see what I'm saying? Just, just a little bit, Dr. Nikisha. Just, boom. And I guess, you know, like sometimes you can't help yourself. You know, sometimes you're being delivered. See, you're being delivered. So, you know, my hand, my hand, my, my hand moved faster than I could think. That I'm not, okay, I took my hand back. You know, so, but he still slept though. He didn't wake up. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Prime Minister. I love you all, okay, family. Now, listen to me. Uh, you know, those that are, yes, yes, he is. Now, those that are with the financial group, okay, stay together. I know some people take themselves, I don't know, maybe it's too many messages. I don't know. I don't. I pray that people stay connected, okay, with prayer mantle, okay? I just pray. You know, all I know is to pray. You know, I don't, I don't lie. I tell the truth. So sometimes, some people don't like them kind of stuff because, you know, I don't call you and tell you that you're gonna get a house if you spin around twelve times, or if you send me a thousand dollars. I don't never, I ain't never gonna do that. So you know, I just pray that you catch the spirit of this book. See now, how are you gonna tell me to tickle him under his feet? That is gonna wake up. Then I have to come on prayer mantle and confess. Now listen, listen, listen. I'm I'm being delivered. Rather than help me, you're not giving me ideas in my head of what to do. Now, how's that nice? Next, I think I'm going to confess. I ain't going to do it. I reject that in Jesus' name. Father, I will not tickle him. I will not touch his nose. In Jesus' name, amen. That's my prayer point. You, you people have two prayer points. I have three. My third one is I'll keep my hands to myself. I'll keep my feet to myself. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, bless me so that I will not do as the people are requesting for me to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. I know, woman of God, you know so. Oh, God. See, no, you see, prayer man, you people ain't helping me. I thought you guys were on my side. Look at the ideas that somebody's putting into my head. I should tickle him under his feet. He's going to get up. Then I have to come on prayer mantle and confess that, oh, I, I made a mistake. You know, I did something that I knew I wasn't supposed to do. I reject that in Jesus' name. Father, don't let me even remember that somebody said on Periscope. Hey, Jesus. Love you, or prayer about you. Now go have a blessed, okay? Is everybody back to like is is everybody back to work now? Everything's back to normal. Like, you know, you know, 25th, you know, 24th, 25th, 26th, things are a bit, you know. Oh, thank you, woman of God. I appreciate that. He's got more money than me now, in Jesus' name. I appreciate all of you, okay? I'm not gonna do it. See somebody type of don't I'm not gonna do it. In Jesus' name. Or you're off today. Some people are off. Some people are on. You know, I think you'll be like this till maybe the new year. But you know, we're still being prayer. We're still praying, okay? Because the, the devil don't have no off days. I'm telling you for real, for real, in Jesus' name. Listen, I spoke to my father-in-law today, right? Now that man has so much wisdom. He said some stuff that blew my mind. He was talking to me about when my wife was pregnant and. When my wife went to the hospital, what he felt, you know, I love talking to the older generation because there's a, a coolness and a calmness with them. And he said some stuff that in the next couple of days I'll share with you. Now, if I keep saying to you, listen, some of you go talk to the grandmothers and the grandfathers, those who are alive. I'm telling you, you will glean so much revelation from them. I'm telling you. Oh, you're up to the second. Oh, you're blessed. My God, you're blessed. You're blessed. Okay? Yeah, you know, my, my, my father, you know, he, turned, he you know, turned 80 this year. But yeah, you know, that when I look at him, he was a man beyond his time. You know what I'm saying? And listen to me, let me share something. My father, you know, at one point, because, you know, I was told, and even when I was telling my father before I got married, you know, who the lady was at that time, you know, maybe about two years ago, when I mentioned his name, my father said, Albert, you know that this man at one point in Ghana was the richest man in Ghana? I said, ooh, I didn't know that. Ah, ooh. You know, so um, I got to meet him and, you know, very, very humble spirit, intellectually sound, was way beyond his time. But you know how things are when the devil gets involved. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, Sister Brenda, you know, you know how things are. So things are not like what it's supposed to be. Just catch a rebel. I don't want to share too much. But you know, right. 
So now the challenge is, God, what do we do to activate or to bring back that anointing? That's what I'm saying to you, that we're going to pray. Listen to me. Because, you see, some people, okay, that are supposed to be some of the young people that are supposed to be in charge of stuff, they're now being controlled. The Bible says, I have seen servants on horses and princes walking barefoot. We're going to deal with all of that stuff, okay? In Jesus' name. Amen. So God bless you. Some of you, when you speak to them, all the parents have a notepad ready. Record them. Because they will give you some information. You have no idea. Listen, Genesis chapter 49. Your assignment for today, especially brother, that, you know, that's at home. Listen to this. Read Genesis chapter 49. That will set you up for 2018. It's got nothing to do with the money that you have in the bank. Is what you can speak into the atmosphere for it to become. Is that okay? All right. So we'll meet tonight, okay? We'll meet tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. In Jesus' name. I appreciate you. Legacy. Those are some of the words that we're going to be dealing with, okay? In Jesus' name. Woman of God, just put that kind back to your remembrance. Sister Elizabeth Torres, are you on here this morning? 5 a.m. in Ohio? And you're up praying, my God. Woo! Did I tell you the name? His name is Micaiah. Oh, sorry. My phone, my phone fell out. You, you know Micaiah, the prophet of God in the Bible. Micaiah. Micaiah. Kofi. Kofi means he was born on Friday. Osei is my father's name. His, his, his biology, you know, his Ghanaian name. Micaiah, M I C A I A H, Micaiah. He's a prophet of God in the Bible. Genesis chapter 49. Genesis 49 says the very only Kapam. Genesis chapter 49. Okay, read that. We're going to talk about all of that stuff, okay? Names, the meanings of it, and all that kind of stuff, okay? So I love you. I'll see you tonight. In Jesus' name. Genesis, no, no. Genesis chapter 49. Genesis 4, 49. 4, 9. Read the whole chapter. Okay? That's it. Genesis chapter 49. Micaiah. Prophet of God. I'm praying that he will start ministry at a very young age. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We would, we would pray him until you help me train him well, okay? Bring him up at a very young age to minister the word of God in boldness. In Jesus' name, amen. So God bless you, okay? We'll talk tonight. You see books. I receive that in Jesus' name. You see books in my tomorrow. I received that. Askia. Oh, okay. Ask. How do you spell? It? How do you say that? As, Askia and Micah. Askia. Some of the American names I always struggle to pronounce it. Askia. Askia. Okay. So God bless you. Okay. I see you tonight. I promise. Let's come on tonight. As soon as he can talk, he's gonna start speaking in tongue. Valava sutabasia. Jesus, my God. Be, 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 so. He will, okay? Sister Brenda, God God bless you or love you or God loves you. Sister Brenda, that, that, that's what I was going to say. God loves you. I don't know. You need to hear that. God loves you, okay? God loves you. He loves us all, but he loves you, okay? In Jesus' name, God bless you.